So my second video today is about the infamous Mansa Musa. A legend known for being the richest black man in the so world. of Mali, most famously known as Mansa Musa, was the richest man of the Middle Ages and, perha and perhaps of all history. He ruled at a time when powerful, immensely wealthy monarchs dominated the world. Yet legendary tales of Musa's wealth trumped all others. Musa used his great wealth to fund several impressive feats during his reign, military, economic, cultural and religious. His reign had significant impact on the history of Northwest Africa, traces of which remain visible today. Here are 10 facts about Mansa. Number one, Musa did not have a strong claim to ruling the Mali Empire. His grandfather had been the brother of Sun Dayaita Kita, the founder of the Mali Empire. But neither Musa's grandfather nor his father ever acquired the kingship. Number two, but extraordinary events ensured he ended up as ruler. According to the Arab Egyptian scholar Al Umari, Mansa Abu Bakari Kita the second left Musa to act as a regent of the kingdom while he embarked on an expedition to explore the limits of the Atlantic Ocean. Yet Abu Bakari never returned from this expedition, and according to the laws of the land. Musa succeeded him as the ruler of the Mali Empire. Number three, Musa inherited an empire rich in resources. The nucleus of the Mali Empire's great wealth was his access to a significant surplus of gold sources at a time when the resource was in high demand. Indeed, some suggest Mali may have been the largest producer of gold in the world at that time. Consequently, Musa's coffers swelled. Number four, Musa was a very successful military leader. During Musa's 25-year rule, the Mali Empire more than tripled in size and had significant influence in several modern-day countries, including um, Mauritania, Senegal, Nigeria, Burkina Faso, and Chad. Musa conquered more than 20 major cities in his lifetime. This included the prestigious Songhai capital of Gaul on the Niger River, one of the oldest trading centres in Western five, Africa. Musa made a famous pilgrimage to Mecca. Between 1324 and 1325, Musa began a long journey from Mali to Mecca to visit the holy site. He made sure to arrive in spectacular style, organising the most impressive caravan in human history to accompany him. 60,000 men and 80 camels according to eyewitnesses. The logistic challenges for sustaining this mighty company may have been significant, yet Musa used his great wealth to provide for his party. Musa was also sure to recruit Muslim teachers and leaders during his journey so that they may accompany him home and spread the teaching of the Quran further in his own kingdom. He was particularly generous to Cairo. As they were making their way towards Mecca, Musa and his caravan travelled through Cairo where the Egyptian Sultan and Nasser persistently requested that Musa pay him a visit. Although Musa initially refused the request, he eventually relented. The meat improved highly productive. The two sultans established good diplomatic relations from the meeting and a trade agreement was struck between the kingdoms of Egypt and Mali. In return, Mansa Musa spent a significant sum of gold in the Egyptian capital to show his gratitude. This inadvertently caused great problems, however. Musa spent so much gold that the resources value decreased and remained relatively low for many years, causing Cairo's economy to crash. Musa's extravagant spending caused severe inflation, not just in Cairo, but also Medina and Mecca. He transferred Timbuktu into the epicentre of his empire. Recognising its potential for power and prosperity, Musa relocated his court to the city after absorbing it into the Malay Empire in circa 1327. With Musa's backing, the city soon transformed from an insignificant settlement into one of the most prestigious cities in the world, a thriving centre of trade, scholarship and religion. And also turned it into the greatest centre of learning in Africa. One of Mansa Musa's greatest acts that helped turn Timbuktu into a wealthy, famous metropolis was his construction of the Jigemba Mosque. 
The mosque soon became a famous learning centre that both attracted scholars from across the Muslim world and became home to over a million manuscripts. Its construction helped move to transfer Timbuktu into the centre of learning that could rival Alexandria in antiquity. The Mansa Musa's legendary well soon stretched far and wide. In the, Catalan, in the Catalan Atlas, one of the most important maps of the medieval period created some 50 years after Mansa Musa ruled, Musa is depicted in a map section showing Sub-Sahara sitting on a throne wearing a diadem and holding aloft a gold coin, a symbol of his great wealth. Finally, number 10, there is debate as to when Musa died. Some suggest he died in circa 1330, not long after his return from Mecca. Yet others believe he died no earlier than 1337, as a new contemporary Islamic historian, Ibn Khaldun, states he was still involved in diplomatic affairs that, so that year. Is it. Once again, as I stated in my previous video on Shaka Zulu, please let me know your thoughts down below on Mansa Musa. Have you heard of him? Um, what do you? Why do you think? Why do you think he became like the richest black man in history? I mean, can you imagine? The richest black man in history even to today nobody is touching him just wow just see you in a few minutes for another video